Hi, I'm Kaylee, and this is my reading update for 30 books in 30 days. I haven't done an update in a while because I have been battling off COVID for the last two weeks, but I'm finally feeling better, and I did do quite a bit of reading while I was sick in bed. So now I'm gonna update you on some of the reading that I've been doing. I finished reading the entire Your Lie in April manga series, all 11 volumes, plus the little short story collection, The Six Person Etude, that's kind of attached to that manga series. I love it. Every time I reread it, I just love it so much. And it was really nice when you're sick in bed to have something that you know you you already know you love. You already know the basic story, so if you fall asleep halfway through, it doesn't really matter. I really, really enjoyed rereading through this manga series, and I gave every single book five stars. But the six person etude, the short story collection, I only gave three stars. It just didn't really add anything extra to the series. It just kind of took certain scenes from the series and gave more of a backstory and more details. But I just kind of, eh, it was fine, but it wasn't great. I read a couple more short stories from Rudyard Kipling. I read The Wish House and Mary Postgate. And I think I read The Gardener as well. So that's three more short stories from Kipling. I didn't really enjoy these very much. They were kind of depressing and people died and a couple of them were set kind of in the aftermath of World War II. And so it's all about these people who are left when their loved ones have died overseas in, you know, horrible battles. So it was actually kind of depressing. And I was sick. I didn't want to read depressing stuff. So I did not particularly enjoy those. I also read a graphic novel, The Adventures of Snoop, The Mountain of Hope. This is about a goat, Snoop, who wants to go on a quest to find the primordial grass that grants, if you eat it, then it grants you perfect health and wisdom. In this first volume, Snoop is just remembering the legend of the first ancient goat who found and discovered the primordial grass. So in the first volume, Snoop really doesn't even feature in the story. He's just telling us the legend of Ba Caprone, who first discovered the primordial grass. This graphic novel was fine. It wasn't amazing or anything. The story was kind of disjointed and the art style just kind of didn't flow along. The design of the graphic novel just wasn't that great. There would be like these text boxes with these long paragraphs and it's just not what you would normally see in the design of a graphic novel so it kind of threw me off a little bit. It was cute though and it's a fun little adventure. I gave it three stars. I also read The Story of a Whim by Grace Livingston Hill. This one was kind of a kind of a funny one. I felt like there were a few plot holes in it where I was like what? That would never happen. <laughs> But it's about this girl who has an organ that she wants to get rid of. She doesn't need it. And she sees all these packages of furniture at the train station. And she thinks, wouldn't it be funny if we just sent this organ along with this other furniture to this person? And it would be this really funny surprise for them. So she does a little letter to this person and gets the address off of the labels of this furniture and she sends it to them. And it turns out that it's an orange farmer in Florida. And he doesn't know what to do with this organ. And she says in her letter that she hopes the organ can be used for a church or a Sunday school. And so now he feels kind of obligated, like this person sent me this organ and they want it to be used for a Sunday school. Maybe I should start like a Sunday school Bible study in my home. And of course, shenanigans ensue and it's really funny and weird. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was just hilarious and strange. <laughs> I also read another short novella from Grace Livingston Hill, Aunt Crete's Emancipation. This is all about an old aunt who is kind of bullied by her sister and her niece and she ends up doing all the hard chores around the house. But then her nephew comes to visit from out west and he apparently has struck it rich out in the Klondike and he takes Aunt Crete under his wing and basically liberates her from these family bullies. It was really fun and cute. It's only like 60 pages. I enjoyed it. I thought that was really fun. And it was kind of nice to read something from Grace Leeson Hill that is not actually a romance. It was just more about this family coming together. I read McTavish on the Move, which is all about a family who has to move house 
and one of the children is having a really difficult time with it and they don't want to move and have to go to a new school and make new friends and they're very scared about it but McTavish, the dog, is going to make things better. This was really cute. I liked the really sweet illustrations inside. It's a very short little book and it was just really funny and really adorable. I gave McTavish on the Move four stars. And I read Crimson Twill, Witch in the City. Crimson is a little witch who's very different. She doesn't want a pointy witch's hat. She wants a hat with a bow. She doesn't want to wear a black dress. She wants to wear polka dots. And when her mother takes her to go shopping at Broomingdale's, well, Crimson wants to find something that's different from other witches. She wants to go shopping and buy something that really reflects her own style. This was hilarious and adorable and just like so cute. <laughs> My only complaint with this book is that the illustrations seemed kind of dark. Like I wish it had been a little bit lighter, but I guess they're trying to show like all the witches are wearing black and everything. And so the background, just kind of ends up being really dark. But the story is really light and fun. So I'm not sure what was going on with the artwork there. I gave this one five stars. This was just so cute. So now I only have a few things left to read. I need to finish up reading one more short story and two essays and a handful of poems out of the Rudyard Kipling book. And I also need to read The Ordinary Princess. So I've got a little bit more to go for the last few days of September. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know how is your reading going for this last little bit of September? Are you pretty much caught up? Are you ahead? Have you already finished your reading that you set your goals for yourself in September? Or like me, do you just have a little bit left to go? I hope that your reading has been going really well. Thanks for watching. Watching, please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.